Today I want to talk about that moment in relationships of whatever kind. When we think, I wish they were different. I wish they would change. They need to change. They need to be more like I want them to be. Hey everyone, I'm Micah. I'm a psychologist. Welcome here. So I think the thoughts that I described about wanting someone else to be different are not unfamiliar to you. Whenever someone does something that is inconvenient for us or doesn't meet our hopes and expectations, we can get stuck in these types of thoughts. We can even start ruminating about this until our mental picture of the other person is only composed of everything we find bothersome, difficult, or hard to like. And of course, this also influences how we interact with them, even if we think it doesn't. One of the main reasons this happens is because we are not sufficiently aware of our agency, our power to influence and change this relationship, even if the other person is not investing into change. We're often not aware that we are co-creating whatever is happening between us. And once we stop contributing our part to that co-creation, this repeating pattern in the relationship changes and our experience of it. Interestingly, this is often also why we feel trapped in relationships or forced into things by others. We fuse with them. We melt away who we are, our vision and what we stand for and let them take over. We think that this is what it means to be close and what is required of me in order to be in relationships. We think that when someone has an expectation, I have to fulfill it. So here are some examples of how we trap ourselves into certain interactions and think that the other person is forcing me into this interaction because they are not different and they are not changing. Someone starts an in-depth discussion with you and you stay in it. Someone starts arguing with you and you argue back. Someone starts questioning you and you give explanations and justifications. Someone criticizes you and you accept that as truth. Someone requests you to do something for them and you say yes. Someone projects their past onto you rejects you and you take it personally. Someone calls you and you pick up the phone. Someone invites you over and you go. Someone makes an offer and you accept it. Someone tells you what they like and you adapt to be more like that. Someone makes a suggestion and you say yes. Someone has a certain facial expression and you respond to it. Someone assumes you will do something without asking and you do it without questioning. Most of these examples leave open whether or not the person in this example reacted to the other person because they wanted to do these things or because it was an automatism. And that's really what the question is. Do I want to do these things? Do I want to engage in this way? Or am I forcing myself into something that doesn't really resonate with my inner world? Often what happens if this continues for longer periods of time is that it doesn't work out. You suddenly feel the need to completely cut off from this person or certain situations because of all of those accumulated instances of not allowing yourself to be authentic. And you don't even know how to explain it to them except for using the last instance in which you felt forced into something by them. And to them, it seems like a complete overreaction to a little thing and that they should be given a second chance. And sure, sometimes we need to end a relationship or take a step back, but we can avoid this from becoming a repeating pattern in our life when we allow ourselves to be authentic right from the beginning, when we don't allow another person's inner world 
to swallow up ours. That's what we are contributing to that co-creation, that we are allowing that to happen. And this doesn't only reply to such bigger decisions in relationships, but also just to the daily small interactions and great relationships that make them challenging. And how much we can actually change when we focus on our agency, on the co-creation, instead of only focusing in on trying to get the other person to change and trying to control them. What I want to do now is close the circle and come back to the starting point of this video of wishing someone else would be different. This relationship would be so much easier for me if this person wouldn't have certain needs or expectations. I would be so relieved if they could just change and be different. But why do we feel so burdened and threatened by someone else's needs, expectations, hopes, or invitations? Why do we think the only solution is for them to stop acting in certain ways, to stop having certain assumptions, hopes, or making certain requests? It's because we're forgetting that there's another way, that we're not just helpless and without agency. Instead of asking them to stop asking certain things of us, we can also just learn to say no. Instead of wishing that they would change and stop pulling us into certain interactions, we can also just learn not to engage with them in that way. Think of a situation that is repeatedly difficult for you with another person. When does this person feel like a trap, a burden, or a heavy weight on your shoulders? When does it feel like they're making life difficult for you? When does it feel like you have to be someone you're not for them? Now think about stopping your automatic reaction of going along with the other person. This first requires you to notice this difficult situation has come up again. And then to notice that your inner world doesn't correspond to this expectation. And then it's about communicating boundaries and needs, and that takes practice. It could mean leaving the room, changing the topic. It could mean saying, I see it differently, or I'm not open to discussing this, or this is such an important topic, but right now I don't have the time to get into it. When can we talk about this later? It could also mean finding either or additionally a different way of relating to the situation internally, a way that doesn't personalize something that came from the other person's past or not projecting your own past hurts into the situation. Of course, this doesn't work without courage. Discovering and acting on our agency instead of handing over the responsibility for our choices to others takes courage. It means that we'll make mistakes sometimes. It means that we have to step out as who we are and be seen as that by others. It means that we have to learn to communicate our authenticity in a way that nourishes relationships. It means we'll have to learn how to make room for other people's reactions to our authenticity. It means we have to normalize disappointing people sometimes. We can't live up to every hope and expectation of another person and emotionally mature adults can handle that. And when we dare to use our agency, other people's requests, choices, and behavior no longer feels as threatening to us because we know that it doesn't have to define us even if we're in some sort of relationship. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section or if you have questions or video topic requests or suggestions. Remember to subscribe if that resonates with your inner world. And if you like reading personal growth content, I send out a weekly newsletter that you can subscribe to at the link in the description box. 
until next time, take care. And remember, we have agency in relationships. We are co-creators. And it's not like the only choice we have is to wait for others to be different or change. <laughs>